Hello, and welcome to The Human Frequency. We are two weeks removed now from Project Newsom, where we gridded the entire city of Sacramento with Organite, and wow, what a difference. This is very unusual and very welcome to have this amount of precipitation hit all along the West Coast this early in the rainy season. It's still mid to late October. Yes, Gifting Sacramento uh, released an unbelievable amount of rain. And we've been doing this for seven years now, and I've never seen this much of an extreme result. It's more rain than I've seen from any post-gifting project. We've seen a lot in the past, uh, but this time I'm talking, you know, five to 10, even more inches in Northern California and the gifted areas. So I, I have to say I'm speechless. Yeah, me too. And for those of you who are not in California or from California, I know I've said this before many times, but California typically does not receive any precipitation or extremely, extremely trace amounts between May and early November mm -hmm. is, is pretty typical. I spent my entire life in Southern California and sure enough, year after year, it's, it's always more or less the same thing. So to see rain like this before Halloween is really something. Mm -hmm. So um, we have some articles to share. There's been so much great news out of Sacramento and the Bay Area and pretty much all over Northern California. We have early snow. So we have ski resorts opening early and um, records being shattered. I mean, absolutely like decimated, <laughs> as decimated as the dry drought plague landscape yeah. of California, which we'll see <laughs> in the photos in these articles. Even before this rain, it really wasn't what they were saying. It really wasn't as bad as they were saying. So I'm not exactly sure where they get these statistics. They say that the water year in 2021 was, I don't know, the third driest on record or something like, I, I don't know where they're getting it from. So I can't verify what they're saying. And I also can't disprove it because I, I can't measure rainfall everywhere. But based on the way the landscape looks, it just doesn't sound true. So, I mean, you'll see. Yeah, we're going to go. Some... We're going to go through some photographic evidence that it's it's not what they say it has been. So let's start with Ground Zero, Sacramento. And uh, to learn what we did in Sacramento, you can just look at the previous video about it. Um, we did what we do everywhere, and we did it very thoroughly because Sacramento was smaller than we thought it would be. So my estimation was about 150 tower busters within the city, and another 50 in the outskirts and on the way and on the way out. And this, in addition to all of the other gifting we had done throughout California and all of the major cities, Los Angeles, obviously, because we lived there most of our lives, San Diego, San Francisco, up further in Northern California, Redding, and also out in the deserts near El Centro and close to the Arizona border. And, of course, Las Vegas, which is very near California. So Sacramento was just one of many things that we've done in the, in the state of California, but it was kind of that last DOR stronghold of theirs. So to really just give it that last finishing touch right before the rainy season officially starts was really, it was really opportune timing for, for us and for, for everything, everything that lives. <laughs> the records are in. Here's how much rain fell Sunday from Sacramento's storm in the Sacramento Bee. They're explaining what a wildfire burn scar is here too, they don't, because they're going to be pushing the wildfires a lot throughout these articles. You'll see. Um, I'm not going to dwell on that, but they like to promote the destructive elements of it. And so where there was burning, of course, there's mudslides. They dwell on that is the point. Any bit of, of negative spin they can put on, on this and any other positive thing that happens, they will do. It's official. More rain fell Sunday than any other day in Sacramento's recorded history, the National Weather Service confirmed on a waterlogged Monday morning. And we were also having some nice rain on Monday here in Southern California. Very heavy rain. The storm exceeded forecast expectations, bombarding the Capitol with more than five inches in 24 hours. The official mark from 1 a.m. Sunday to 1 a.m. Monday as the Weather Services City Station near Sacramento State was 5.44 inches. So 5.44 inches is the rain record that beat the previous record of 5.28 inches 
that was set in April, April 20th, 1880. So that is an unbelievable amount of time. I mean, the year my great, great grandmother was born. (laughs) (laughs) So we're up to 5.44 inches now. So that is amazing. And in the 141 year interim, no other day has even breached four inches. So this is, and there's another record here because they like to compartmentalize weather data. So they also say, well, they go by the month and by the day. And so we have also that, um, marking an exceptionally severe and early start to rainy season. Sunday obliterated the previous daily record, 1.21 inches set on October 24th, 2010. You know what's interesting about 2010? That's the year the Obelix was invented. And it was an exceptionally rainy year. And this is before I knew anything about Organite or the weather. This is from before we were doing this. So that's interesting that the year that that device was invented was also a, a record-breaking year in so many places. That is interesting. And what's interesting to me about this five and a half inches, just shy of five and a half inches, is that this is in an urban area too. And urban areas, as you've pointed out before, and as we all know, that's that's the heaviest concentration of DLR in any area for versus rural areas. They're obviously not going to have so much in terms of DLR emitters. The city, the urban area, that is the highest concentration. So to see that kind of total in a densely populated urban area with all those cell towers Mm. and Wi-Fi routers and smartphones and all that stuff, that is really just absolutely incredible. So um, actually also weather is also measured at airports. So downtowns and airports are major places where weather is measured. And I notice it's always very low in these places. So since you mentioned the urban area, I'll also point out that at the airport, it was 5.41 inches, smashing the previous record of 3.77 inches, which was set in 1962. So that's also very interesting when it can be heavy in downtowns and airports. So there's so many records being set here. That's just a few of them. But the main thing is, wow, more rain in Sacramento, the very place that we just gridded with Organite less than two weeks after the project was completed does show more evidence. I mean, it's it's an ever-growing body of evidence. I say it's proof by this point because it's been seven years, yeah. but I think it takes 10 years to prove something, right? Well, <laughs> if they don't like it, it'll never be proven. That's but what I think. Too. <laughs> the fact is it's early. It's important to remember that it's very early. So that's what I wanted to share here. There were um, <coughs> many records. Let me see, I think there's a list here. Yep. So here we go, Sacramento 5.44 and at the airport, Uh, airport 5.41. There are some places here specifically that we were in. So it's really exciting to see Elk Grove was huge, 6.73 inches. And we were there and we're not the only ones who gifted Elk Grove. We have a friend who also placed Organite there. Even Uh, Watt Avenue. I remember uh, gifting that creek. Pointed out to me. Ah, here we go. Yes, we did. I remember this too. And I know all the street names there. And we did gift in Rio, (laughs) Linda. We made a little special detour to make sure they had a couple of tower busters in their tiny little town up there. And so many, many things here. I mean, 7.57 inches in Cameron Park, 7.30 inches in El Dorado Hills. I mean, over seven inches of rain is astronomical anywhere in California in October. Grass Valley, we first visited and gifted Grass Valley in 2015 and Paradise and Paradise where it rained, where it it was a huge fire that destroyed the whole place from what we hear. Okay, there's a few more totals. Forbes Town, almost 10 inches. So that was, and there's even more. I mean, I can't even go over them all. So well, they, they really love their statistics. So, but these just, are great yeah. ones for, for our side of things to show that the Organite really is doing what we said it does because we've seen it over and over again. You can go to my blog and I have links to these news stories. Let's see what else we got here. So now from San Francisco area, we also had record rainfall. California pounded, I'm, I'm not even going to dignify <laughs> the first two letters of, of this. California pounded by massive storm. San Francisco sees its fourth wettest day ever. There's a video here. I'm not going to play it because I think it's going to make us freeze up, but you can check it out. Go to my blog and click on any of these news stories and look at the amazing things going on in California. So we had another uh, record-breaking rain in San Francisco. I'm going to go to the uh, statistics here. It's been a memorable past 24 hours for the Bay Area. 
has long talked about atmospheric river rolled through the region. Okay, I, I just said a no-no word, atmospheric <laughs> river, yeah. um, because that is one other made up term. They don't want to acknowledge that Oregon energy makes the rain happen, that it that's what creates the storms. It brings together the water out of the atmosphere. They say there's already a river in the atmosphere. They can't acknowledge how it got there. See, that's the problem. They won't acknowledge that. Well, yeah, the reason I said I'm not going to dignify the term drought stricken is because it's a lie. I'm also not going to dignify atmospheric river or bomb cyclone. That's the latest one that they're really excited about. These are all made up terms. I think they like that one, the bomb cyclone, because it sounds really, really sounds bad. Really scary. Scary. <laughs> and it, it doesn't actually mean anything. So these things they say, oh, there's a river in the sky. There's a bomb cyclone. There's just very high orgone energy that's breaking down a long blockage, a blockage that's been there for more than the decades that Sacramento has had electricity. Although, you know, we are now dealing with more and more of this electromagnetic pollution. But we're talking about a place that's been really not a very wet climate for a very, very long time. So, um, and overflowing river, rivers in Napa and Sonoma counties, that's to the north. We've gifted there before too, in 20, uh, 2017, 2018, and in 2016, I mean, just several different trips through the same areas. So the weather <laughs> service called preliminary rainfall totals <laughs> staggering, including 11 inches at the base of Marin County's Mount Tamalpais and 4.02 inches in downtown San Francisco. This is astronomical. And again, it's a downtown. So downtowns are always lower in rainfall, even than the surrounding parts of the city. It just seems to be that way across the board. And that does match up with what we learned when we read The Science of Rain by Dwayne Gardner about spare electrons yes. in the atmosphere inhibiting rainstorms and rainstorms sometimes going around cities. So if we're getting 4.02 inches in downtown San Francisco, this is a record that has beaten records that go back again to the gold rush days. This is what the Weather Service is saying. They're acknowledging this. Mount Tamalpais had a weather ball on it. Uh, we gifted that in 2018. And, thoroughly. <laughs> oh, very thoroughly. We made sure there were many tower busters at the top, just in case one gets lost or found and take, taken somewhere else. We made sure that the weather ball and the cell tower array was gifted. And this is where we're seeing so much rain now. So this is really wonderful news. It looks like yesterday was the fourth west day ever for downtown San Francisco where records go back to gold rush years, the weather service said. So we're breaking huge, huge records in California. 150 years ago or more. And yeah, mentioned Sacramento again. Central so Valley. there's yeah. a lot to read here. I'm only gonna just go over a few things. It's too much. Please visit my blog and read the stories if you wanna see if you're really obsessed with weather like I am. And they are saying that California's water year uh, was the lowest, uh, second driest on record, actually. Um, they said that last year's was the fifth driest. I really don't know where they're getting this from. It's very hard for me to, to figure because when you see some of the pictures in the other articles, you're going to see areas that have not been drought plagued. I mean, it, we're just getting done with summer, the driest time of year. They generally try to talk drought in October right before it starts raining. And actually, they declared a state of drought emergency for Los Angeles. Three days before yeah, the storm. Yeah, they just came. did it. So. They're just trying to do whatever they can at the last minute before it becomes impossible because it's going to be too rainy. Now, remember what I said earlier in the episode. It is totally normal for California to not receive rain between May and November. It's I mean, a little bit, to like trace amounts. Yeah, a very, very little bit. But it's totally normal to get basically nothing during those months. That is not drought. That is a misuse of the word drought because drought is there should be rain, but there isn't any for whatever reason. And that's just not the case here. It's it's just a normal, it's, it's cycles, wet season, dry season, wet season, dry season. And the summer is the dry season. They used to just call it summer. And there, there were never any articles like this when I was growing up. It was just summer. Well, summer is Angeles. also global warming season because it's warm. So it's warm and dry. So it's global warming and drought. It's pretty simple when you just look at it and realize how they're playing with your mind. So my point is, which I just hammered into the ground by this point, is that we have to take all of these media statistics with a grain of salt 
and understand going into any article that they're always going to try and downplay whatever positive thing is happening at whatever time it's happening. Well, so. reality doesn't lie. And Mammoth Ski Resort is opening two weeks early. They just announced they'll be opening on October 29th. And normally they don't open until uh, November 13th. They were That's when they were planning to open. So we have two weeks early. This is only the 10th October opening in the mountains history. That says it all right there. This is unprecedented what we're seeing right now. October is the dry season. So I just wanted to share that too and see if there's any more cool pictures to show you here. I we think gifted that's it. Mammoth too, we by did. the way, in 2017. And that's I, it for cool pictures. And I remember specifically, it was an extremely high DOR region when we went through. It was, it, it, was, it was horrific. And I thought it would be absolutely beautiful, which it was. It's beautiful, but it was energetically extremely painful to be there. I mean, I got a terrible headache. And we gifted it about three weeks before Jerry Brown, the California governor at the time, officially declared that drought to be over. It had actually, end, in right. reality, ended long before that. But yeah. the, the fact that they admitted it, I think it was on April 7th, and we went through there right around March 20th or so. Of 2017. Of 2017. 2017. And there was a lot of snow on the ground, obviously, but there was this extremely high agitating DOR presence Mm. there. And it was, it was, it was, I remember having a headache. And and for people who are just getting acquainted with all of this and are just starting to notice strange things in the sky, the high DOR presence was accompanied by hazy skies with uh, some lingering jet trails which we call chemtrails colloquially. So just to get, just for anybody who's still just looking at the sky, you don't even have to see it to feel it. What you're seeing up there is actually the visual manifestation of an energetic phenomenon. So instead of dwelling on what it looks like, just understand what's causing it is, it's deadly radiation is holding pollution in the sky And it's also preventing cloud formations. And most of what you're seeing up there that looks all white and hazy is actually just clouds being prevented from forming. So instead of falling fear into the fear of the um, heavy metals and all of that, that they're saying that's up there, just remember that there's very little actual pollution that high up. It's mostly water vapor that's been DORized. So it's being hit with a different kind of pollution. You're being diverted to particulate pollution, but it's actually energetic pollution. Yes. And that's why we felt really bad there. Not because stuff was falling on us, but because we were energetically feeling uh, what was going on with the land there. That's a huge, huge cataclysm of the past. I mean, the Sierras, all mountains in this world are not what we think they are. They were created through a cataclysm and that energy is still held there. They are energy centers that were destroyed, but they're still energy centers and they still can be healed. We still get emails from people who just discovered chemtrails a couple of days ago. So if if you are new to this, I would strongly encourage you to go to our website, www.thechemo.com. It's in the description section below this video. And please check out two links specifically. We have an FAQ where we answer a lot of your questions about that and, and other related things. But also please check out the article, Chemtrail Myths Debunked. Both of these links can be found in the Orgone Energy section. So click on Orgone Energy, because that's what this is all about. The reason we're getting rain is because of high OR, Orgone Energy, um, and we are neutralizing deadly radiation, which is why the skies look healthy and are generating rainfall. It's not good to get caught up in the idea that there's a government plot to spray us, because in reality, we're seeing weather phenomenon up there that are being influenced by uh, electromagnetic sources on the earth and possibly off the earth. But, But what we need to do is fight energy with energy and not worry so much about hypothetical materials, because what we're doing gets rid of all the bad stuff. It just, you'll see it clear away. Whatever you see up there that doesn't look good, it will clean up. We've learned a lot in the last eight years that we've been aware of orgone energy. So that that's what this is about, is about neutralizing that deadly energy with life affirming energy and showing you the results. Here's just another one. There's a guy bicycling through Pasadena. It's a pink bicycle and a pink wall. That's very in well, just the red wheel is, shirt. Just the wheel is pink. And it's only the rear wheel. 
only in LA. <laughs> I'm just here mostly to show you pictures because all of the statistics in here. A seagull windsurfing. No, the man is windsurfing. And um, that's where our Shungite stones are right there on that boat. They won't let them <laughs> into the port. So we're, we're soon going to run out of Shungite. And our lapis, well, that's the lapis is right there. <laughs> this is very cool to see. I, I, I can't stress this enough. It's October 27th today. This is, and this was, the storm was a few days ago. This is basically unheard of to see this amount of snow this early in, in the season. So the, this, this is taken at Mammoth. Yeah, this is at Mammoth. This is about as much snow as we actually get in the mountain area where we live. If it gets like that here where we are, that's considered a lot because we're down in Southern California and we're not that high up. But Mammoth, this is just the beginning. I mean, in past years, they've gotten many, many feet of snow there. And it's always been on the heels of these massive gifting efforts. And typically even high up places like this are still getting rain at, at this early on in, into the rainy season. Yeah, we actually so. got a lot of rain here. That's very, very unusual. I'll show you pictures of that at the end. It's very unusual for us to have any rain here really uh, at this time of year. Usually it kind of goes from sunny and clear to snowy without much of a rainy season in between. The rain yeah. should end fire season. They say, here's another beautiful place, um, a nice flowing river. This is at um, Three Rivers, California. We I also get, gifted there. Yeah. In, uh, this was in 2016. 2016. Yep. I got news for you. The fire season is over. There's no doubt about it. You see, this is just another one of the tactics I was talking about. They're just any little thing they can do to make it, to just defray the amazingness of of this of, of and you can look at the land and see just how healthy the vegetation is this is there is no drought it's just not true and you can look at anywhere in the state except for perhaps the desert in death valley <laughs> hey there was a lot of rain there from work we did in the summer and in springtime mm -hmm. there will likely be flower blooms there so you, you can <laughs> just look at the vegetation in most places and see what's really going on they do say here, and this is this is the kind of stuff that's, you know, this is the stuff that annoys me, but I'm going to share it because we do need to say a little bit about how they're promoting this rain um, and how they're still using the rain to promote a drought. Um, so this, here's another uh, meteorologist speaking here. He says, despite this really, really insane rainfall, the winter is probably going to be drier than average. He also says that we need to get, uh, this is what he said, to end different aspects of the drought i see i don't know what that means i can that tell you having to do with how much water they're taking out of reservoirs <laughs> let me explain something about drought there is either a drought or there isn't a drought there aren't there are no aspects it's it's a very it's a very set thing it's it's like either someone is dead or they're not they're not somewhat dead for example <laughs> there's there are no gradations there so he says this, that we it's are a going meaningless to need, term. He says, despite what's going on now, you are going to need a situation where parts of California get precipitation over the next three months. That's about 200 percent of normal. I think we can make that happen. As preposterous as what he's saying sounds, I actually think we can make it happen. I think it might already be happening. But the problem with that is they can just lie and and say, no, normal is actually this now. You see what they can do? They this can, is, this is the, the problem normal. with attaching a number to everything is that they can just manipulate it at will. And there's no way to verify anything. I really like this picture. <laughs> yeah, I think we're now in the more comedic part of the news articles because a lot of the, the stories on this, they only have a few pieces of useful information and then a bunch of just experts like one after another after another of meteorologists and climatologists saying why this isn't going to help us. So I don't understand that because every time they do that, they're proven wrong within a couple of months. They have to admit that everything is fine now. Um, the LA Times says not even record breaking rainstorm will end California's drought, experts say. And I love this article because here the road closed sign in the flooded neighborhood is floating. It's so flooded that the road closed sign got knocked over. And that's uh, in San Rafael, up in the Bay Area, where they had unbelievable amounts of rain. 
Okay. Parts of Northern California saw deluges of five to 10 inches smashing records from Sacramento to Blue County and Placer County. And this is a little before the storm ended, up to 1.5 inches of rain could fall over Los Angeles County by the time the sky is clear. We did have great rain uh, throughout Southern California. There is a precipitation map on my website also. I could show you at the end that shows those totals. But the relief is tempered by a long-term reality. After the storm passes, the drought plaguing much of the state will still be here, experts said. No, it won't. The storm signifies that the drought is at an end. That's the this goes back to what I was just saying. There's either a drought or there isn't. The storm indicates that it's rainy season now and it's early. It's, it, I mean, how much more blatant can I be here? It, what's going on here is that the, it's, it's so hard, so hard to get these parasites to concede any territory in this war. And it is a war. Well, I don't really mind what they say because reality speaks for itself. Um, but I guess here's another one. This is a very common thing they throw around, um, things like this. Uh, Bill Patzert, who uh, he's mentioned in my book as well, uh, he's now a retired climate scientist. And actually, I got him admitting to some good weather-related stuff in another article. But it was like pulling teeth to get him to admit Here he estimates sure. that it'll take 17 years of above normal rainfall and snowpack to refill Lake Mead which has fallen to critically low levels, that is getting drained constantly. And the problem is also that they're looking at uh, reservoirs. I think part of how they measure drought is based on what reservoirs look like. But since people are using that water and it's being drained, it's impossible to really use that as a gauge. So exactly. that's what they're pretty much saying. Um, I don't know if I have much more here. Let's see. It's just, I guess my point was really, it's just frustrating. I know I have one to, more thing. To hear all, all of these made up statistics. Okay, going to, and just one more, it's more for the pictures because all these articles kind of say the same thing. Um, a historic storm brings heavy rain flooding and mud flows to Northern California. So this is near Dixie fire burn areas. Um, this isn't caused by the fire or the burn area. These are landslides. I mean, this is a massive rain. This is unbelievable what it was doing up there. So I have just a few more cool pictures of things that happened. Well, they're trying to correlate it with the, the fire's burn scar, but this is just, this is something you would see off of Pacific Coast Highway up near Big Sur, and there were no fires there this summer, but yet this kind of thing happens all the time. It's just an astronomical amount of rain. I guess that's that's why I just keep showing these pictures, because it's really great. It's really great to see the results. Um, we worked very hard, and it's always nice when it comes in like this. This is about the most I've ever seen. I mean, we have had some pretty amazing things happen, and I've seen destructive weather, too. On the plus side, this hasn't been horribly destructive. I haven't heard a lot of stories about people losing their homes and stuff like that. Here's a flooded Highway 9, uh, 101 in the Bay Area. Marin County area. And here's another one from the Bay also Area. Also Marin County. A tree was uh, fell over in Ross, California, which is in the Bay Area. I also want to point out that the tree is covered in moss. It did not get covered in moss just from this last rainstorm. And nobody's watering the tree to make moss. And we, <laughs> we have this in our forests here too. Right. This indicates a moist climate. I mean, it hasn't been really that dry. This is a very moist climate in the Bay Area. This is what I'm talking about when I say, just look around, look at nature, look at the vegetation, and you will see just how healthy it is. <laughs> a man reacts as large waves caused by a bomb cyclone storm break against the Oregon coast. It's the bomb cyclone. And he's reveling in the, the fierceness of the storm. The fierceness of the propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're okay. So I think we're about done here. And of course, we're going to be settling back into normal life again here in California for the next for the five next five days. days. So <laughs> this was this so is, funny to see oh. this see this graph here. Okay, so so the, the storm passed. There's there's a few days bef between it and the next storm. So let's just make up some hysteria for that five days. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be below normal I mean, for look five at days. This. October thirty first through November fourth. It I, never it's like zero percent ever. So. I mean, is is the what is this? Is this just for people who are who are looking on their phone and see a scary looking chart. And it's also in nice, these nice tan colors that make you think of the desert. Earth tones. 
it, it evokes a dry and decimated landscape. Desiccated. Oh, yeah, that's what yeah. I meant. <laughs> so we can stop here with the, uh, the news stories now. <laughs> you can see a few of those on my blog if you want to go deeper and just look at the uh, videos. This is, where, this is where we live. This is the vegetation where we live. And even before the storm came in, it was still nice and green and healthy here. This just compounded that. It, to the nth degree. It was a great rain day on Monday. I mean, it's about the most I've ever seen here. I would have to estimate we got about an inch. I kind of based this based on what I saw and also what nearby weather stations measured. Uh, the one right by us didn't get measured, but we did have a rainbow, which was nice. And just look how healthy. It, the vegetation the, looked greener than usual. Not just the trees, but the soil too. You can just, you can see there's like a, a glimmer, a, a shimmering of the landscape. And then, of course, my favorite kind of clouds at sunset, my favorite OR clouds that they kind of roll over the mountain. So uh, let's see, there was one other thing, and here's our little rain total. It's actually kind of, I can't make this bigger, so you can come look at my blog, but they uh, measured over an inch in the Tehachapi Mountains. So I kind of estimate that's about what we got here since they didn't have one. For some reason, Sandberg is no data. I would love the data, but they don't have it gifted <laughs> <laughs> yeah we did we did there's actually a, a weather station we when we see a weather station we do gift it have to yeah but you can you can just see and also again here's our radar you, map here. if you check out the previous video we we've got a ton of maps on there too so this is just and you can see that it's all the way down from from british columbia all the way down to san diego it i don't have british columbia on this map but on the previous maps, you can see just how I do big, have some of those. Just how big this was. Well, yeah, you could see it right here. Uh, this is how big it was. <laughs> this is uh, what they were. This is for Sunday and Monday. So this was the precipicast, but this is actually what happened. It did. It did come in this heavy. We have here, you know, ten plus inches of rain. So I think that's it for uh, things I need to show. Yeah. I just wanted to share uh, these great, great results from this last gifting trip yes and if you have any great results to share from your area please email us and let us know about that i would be because... happy to put your photos on my blog if you have some before and after you want to show me what your sky is doing please share with me and please continue to gift organite because we're i know we're not the only ones doing this we've we've gifted seven thousand in the last seven years but there are many other people that have seen our videos they see just how easy it is to flip the inversion and just just a couple tower busters in your town it makes a tremendous difference and it links with all the other towns that other people have mm -hmm. done so it just it only builds on itself it doesn't ever decrease in strength yeah i want to thank everybody across the world and across the country that's gifted organite in their towns i know a lot of people who are doing it you don't have to go out and do what we do we didn't do that at first if you just make a few of them and just do your area it makes such a difference and so thank you for everyone who's been doing that and um, also, if you appreciate what we're doing on these big gifting trips, please help us out with a donation or you can buy Organite from us. Every little bit helps. I mean, even five bucks it costs a lot of money to go out for days and do these kinds of massive giftings to make the Organite and all our expenses on the way. So uh, I want to thank everyone who's helped us. And um, yeah, please visit our website. It's the Kembo.com and that's in the description below and check out what we're doing. Um, learn how to do it yourself. We've got how to videos you can make organite and uh, I really strongly encourage it. Now is a really good time. Um, they're really, really down now that they're, we've really squashed them. This last rain has destroyed their wildfire season that they were, they do it all the way through November if they can. Uh, they'll do it as long or as they past can. November, they have. as long as they can so get away with it. Really, let's get them while they're down. They are not doing well right now. Um, I have more pictures on the blog of strange holographic crafts. I didn't include them in this weather report because this is more about just the gifting results, but you could check out some really weird stuff. I mean, they are not doing well. Their hologram is breaking down. People's minds are awakening to what's going on and how easy it is to just energetically evict them. Uh, so 
I guess that's what our site is about. It's an instruction manual on how to do that. So yeah, and we appreciate your support <laughs> yeah, so much in whatever form you can donate to us or you can buy Organite from us and gift your town. Either way, it's all very helpful to us and it allows us to continue doing these huge gifting missions. So thank you. Well, thank you very much for listening and we will be back very soon with more new information. We'll see you next time.